Hello everyone, how are you going? Welcome to American vs Australian slang. Now I'm sure everyone knows that both countries have their own fair share of slang, but let's just see how they differ, or maybe even how they're the same. Hi guys, it's Georgia. I'm here with Kristen. Hi. She's American, I'm Australian. And today we'll be comparing our countries through slang. Start at the slang and then we're gonna get to politics right after. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was about to say that, like, I Timely. can't believe that I sound different to you. Like, your your accent to me is a blowing No, I, you no. sound... No. It's not clear. Have you seen it? Like, no. You don't sound like that. It's Cleo, not clear. I don't know, I feel like I've heard people go to that extreme before and I feel like it wouldn't be a thing if they didn't have something to base it on in the first place. Say no. No. Or no. 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 Yeah. 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 I like, like, felt like, that one. Like, yeah, you're like, you're like, oh, I'm Australian. I was about to say, like, wave a flag. Wait, yeah, you have a flag, right? <laughs> No, we just have wait, to figure. Wait, 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 what? I'm fairly sure every country in the world has a flag. I mean, perhaps someone just shares another flag, they don't have their own, but surely everyone knows the main countries, like let's say the top 100 countries, all of Europe, all of America, like being all of America, and then obviously Australia and New Zealand, even if you want to include them, we clearly have our own flags, for goodness sake. And then for her to say that we only have a sticker, honestly, it kind of makes sense because a lot of Australian flags are in sticker form, but I feel like that's probably a worldwide thing as well. Let's begin. How are you? Oh. How are you going? How are you going? Yeah. That just sounds like two different things, like doing and going is different things. Well, I just feel personally attacked right off the get-go. Yes, I am completely of guilty of doing that exact thing, and I just must disagree with her saying no, doing and going are not two different things. And then to have the audacity to completely pronounce the you, like everyone knows that it's, oh, how are you? Not how are you? Especially because if you haven't seen someone for more, more than two minutes, it's basically just a race to see who can ask that question first and so to say how are you takes way too long you just got to get in there and say how are you eraser rubber oh rubber. here we go yeah it's a rubber i don't know if you want to put this in but like a rubber yeah exactly. <laughs> they're the same but we just call them rubbers right. like coffee your rubber mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and don't quote me on this, but I can only imagine that that would come from the UK. So hopefully we're not the odd ones out. I'm fairly sure we're not. I mean, for an American to hear that it completely out of context, he's definitely going to just go what and trigger something in their brain. But eh, it's all the same, you know. You got to rub it out. And once again, a razor just takes too long. No, no, no. You got to shorten it down, get rid of the ER, just slap an A on the end and go rubber. Napkin, serviette, yeah. what? <laughs> fries, chips, oh. chips, chips, hot chips or fries? Yeah, hot chips. <laughs> Chips, 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 and chips. I mean, quickly brushing over the whole napkin serviette debacle. We've covered it before. I'm fairly sure it comes from the UK having French influence, and that's where with Canada was just so messy because they obviously have napkin from the USA and then serviette from history in France. But then now moving on to the real topic, we have fries and chips. Chip, chip. We have chips and chips, and then you can also get hot chips and chips. The only exception that is ever going to be made in Australia that when it isn't chips is going to be for wedges. And you could get, I'm going to get chips, but you definitely going to say wedges most of the time it just because you get the sour cream you get some sweet chili sauce and it's just different hot chips or fries yeah hot chips because they're more so potatoes you're right, and you just blew my mind. <laughs> Hang on a second, what? My mind has just been blown from her mind being blown that they are both made from potatoes. Surely you can make that connection. You know, America's fries are just going to be elongated sliced potatoes, and then you just cut to like a crinkle cut, but they're still going to all be made of potato. They're just fried differently. And by that metric, they should realistically both be called fries from the American standpoint, because if they're going to call one fries and it's deep fried, and then another one and it's just been, I guess, air fried or a whole range of different fried, but it's still been fried so you're describing the act of which has become what it is not what it is where at least Australia just goes nah it's a chip it's a chip and it's a chip you know everything's the same no discrimination to chips around here first grade year one second grade year two yep. <laughs> biscuit scone cracker oh. biscuit Cookie, oh. biscuit, biscuit, oh. Mickey. Ah, it hurt the whole way along. It hurt. I don't even need to hear what she's about to say because the American's just wrong. But here, let's just continue on our way and then I'll come back to it. If they're little and edible and circular, it's a biscuit. But they're made so differently. The process in the oven is so different. The cookie yeah. getting triggered. Look at that, it's different. Therefore, they have to have a different name. Well, to her credit, she didn't argue it too much, and that's probably because her brain is still just putting itself back together from freaking out that chips and chips are both made of potato but I must admit it is quite strange that it is so swapped over let alone even the year one second grade everyone should know that and if you don't you, I guess you're probably American but yes it's year one year two kindergarten year five year 
six, none of this grade stuff. And look, she has put up a photo of a biscuit and a scone, but I'm fairly sure that they're not the same thing. I'm fairly sure from what I've heard in the USA, a biscuit is actually a bit more savory than it is sweet. Whereas a scone in Australia, and I guess we picked it up from the UK, is going to be put with, let's say, jams and those kind of things instead of savory, whatever you want to put on a biscuit. Actually, now that I think about it, I think gravy goes on the biscuit. So that's where it's different. But I wonder how, from a bread perspective, how does it differ or not? Now, this is the only one that I can think is maybe a little bit contentious because I've definitely heard cracker being used before, especially to describe those kinds of things. And thinking about it, that might be down to the fact, I think on the box that they come in, it actually says cracker and not biscuit, but maybe people still call it biscuit. I don't know. That one's confusing me now. And the only last point I'll make is we can use cookie, but only if we're describing like an American style, let's say like a Subway cookie, then you'd use cookie. But if it's going to be like a shortbread, that's a biscuit. Closet, cupboard. Then what do you call a cupboard? Oh, what? what? A cupboard. So, you know, when someone comes out, they're just like, oh, he came out of the cupboard. It doesn't sound quite right, does it? No. Yeah, sounds like he's been really. like cramped up in there for a little bit. That has never ever come to mind, the fact that we call a cupboard a closet or a closet a cupboard. Now I'm completely lost, but no, she said, what do you call a cupboard? And we, yeah, of course you call it a cupboard. I mean, I know what closet is, but I would never use the thing. So yeah, well, I guess everything is just a cupboard to us. TV, telly, I got a cupboard. It's my shout, cotton candy. Oh. Very floss, bathroom, Damn. toilet. The one you call a toilet. A toilet. toilet. That was rapid. Alrighty then, just calm down. Here we go. I've got it covered. It's my shout. Yeah, that completely makes sense. I've got it covered. That doesn't sound right to me. That sounds like, okay, I've covered it up or something. As though you were trying to hide it or even just like, no, 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 don't worry. It's, I've got it covered. It's protected from the rain. I mean, I guess when I say it, it all flows off the tongue and it makes sense, but it's my shout is definitely the way to go. And then in terms of TV versus telly, I guess they're pretty interchangeable. If you're going to buy something, you might say, oh yeah, I'm looking at getting a new TV soon, bloody blah, blah, blah ones died but then if you were to go up to someone and say oh did you see what was on telly last night and they go yeah it was absolutely insane we just say excuse me where's your toilet see efficient and straight to the point no mucking around you want the thing you don't want the whole room i can only imagine and hope so you are asking where specifically is the thing that you're wanting and in this case it's the toilet and so yeah you just ask for what you want instead of going oh excuse me where is the restroom trash rubbish trash can rubbish bin it's bullshit <laughs> it's rubbish hot tub spa trunk boot Boot, boot. This is a boot. Well, I guess that is also a boot, but once again, that was rapid fire. We got hot tub, na na na, spa all the way. In terms of trash versus rubbish, completely get the trash out of here, take it to the trash if you're going to be doing that. But I feel as though in rubbish, you can add garbage to the rubbish as well. I mean, in that sense, people often just say, oh yeah, I'm taking the bins out. And just completely get rid of the garbage, the rubbish, the trash can, even if you want to do that. But if you do want the entire word, then yeah, I guess rubbish bin, garbage bin, definitely not trash can though, because it's not a can, it's a plastic bin. Tights. Stockings, sweats, yeah. tracky-dacks, tracky-dacks, tracky Actually, while I'm on it, the only confusing thing to me is that sweats in this circumstance has been called joggers before. And I was like, what? What do you mean joggers? They go on your feet. They are shoes, like sneakers. And then it wasn't until I saw the photo, I was like, oh, trackies. Why didn't you say so? Sweater, jumper, jumper flip-flops, thong, thong, a G-string. Wow. Are those yours? I thought they were yours. I found them in the toilet. In the toilet? Ugh. We've been through this. That's a little bit scary that that situation didn't resolve itself and they didn't go, oh yeah, they're mine. The fact that neither of them knew whose it was, is that scary? Is that strange? Or I don't know what it is. Disregarding the whole toilet situation, because I mean, if you did find them in the toilet, that would be weird. But hey, in the toilet, in bathroom place, if you want to be calling it that, then that makes sense. But to be honest, if you wanted to be super Australian about it, or even just bogan, you would say G banger. Just get rid of the string, even though that one doesn't look like it's really a G string. You would say G banger if you just want to take it to another level of about thong and g-string soda fizzy drink fizzy drink yeah makes Soft sense drinks. sloppy joe sandwich sloppy joe mirror yeah. mirror yeah mirror 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 i can't even hear the other two are in what you're saying <laughs> mirror mirror on the wall mirror mirror on the wall oh, mirror. mirror right we don't pronounce the rest of the word it's just mirror <laughs> mirror a mirror looking in the mirror <laughs> Honestly, when she was saying mirror, mirror on the wall, she just turned into a meowing cat going mirror because you're not pronouncing the other half of the word. But strangely, even though they're not pronouncing one half of the word, it sounds like they put more R's than the word mirror even has. You know, usually it has three, but it sounds as though they put, I don't know, six or something in there. I mean, to be fair, every time I look at this, I go, how would people from the UK say it? Because surely they have to have the most well-rounded pronunciation of the entire thing going mirror. But I don't even feel like the British would pronounce it O-R, and so I don't know who came up with that one and where they stole the last from but it's definitely just a hard mirror you're so right mirror mirror how do you spell it oh just I, the same. I, okay <laughs> <laughs> we are changed the same 
<laughs> so <laughs> McDonald's. Macas. A washcloth. Mac Washer. Because you wash yourself with it. Fair. Um, what do you call a bathing suit? Swimmers. Because you swim in them. As well as a whole bundle of other things. You know, some people might call them togs. Some people would call them cozy or swimming costume, I guess, if you're going to be fully proper and prim and whatever you want to call it. Otherwise, you might have bathers even. But I feel like no one has ever said bathing suit in Australia. That's just taking it too far and too long for my liking. Gas station. Servo. Afternoon. Oh, Arvo. That's an avocado. No. <laughs> no. What do you call an avocado? An avo. An Avo. Judging by her reaction, I feel like I might need to clear this one up. So you have avo being an avocado and you have avo being afternoon. You got an ah in there instead of an avo. It's just, you know, it's English for you. Liquor store. Bottle. Bottle. Yeah. What? Bottle. <laughs> That's such a good word. Bottle. Oh, I'm so devastated. Oh, I'm so devo. Ah, oh, my finger's all bloody. Oh, there's no bloody water left. <laughs> I'm just picturing yes. like blood water. <laughs> I'll take a mental note not to use bloody around too many Americans then because I don't want that image in their head and then to then put it in my head. I mean, to be fair, I guess I could use bloody in that regard if I was all bloody, but I feel like I'd say, oh, I'm covered in blood, not I'm bloody. Did someone fart? Did someone crack off? Crack off? <laughs> As well as many oh, I others. I think you sharded. I think you followed through. Follow oh. through? Follow through. Like, oh. Sounds like you followed through. When I follow through, like I, it's like, oh, I'm following through with my plan. Beep. Oh, okay. She, she definitely had to finish that sentence because she said, when I follow through, and I was going, what? And then I guess otherwise you could use follow through in the standard way. I don't know what else you'd say besides, yeah, I followed through with that instead of I followed through. That's the big difference there. Beats. Beetroot. Oh, I'm so pissed. I'm so angry. He's so drunk. He's so pissed. Fanny pack. <laughs> Bum bag. Oh, watch out for the curb. Watch out for the gutter. <laughs> Once again, just absolutely rapid fire, but I must say there's not too much that I'm disagreeing with. It's definitely gutter and not curb. Bum bag all the way over fanny pack. That's just going to completely come out the wrong way if you say that. Mixing up drunk and pissed and pissed and drunk and angry and everything else in between yeah it's all just in the mix people are going to realize what's going on pretty quickly i think in those kind of circumstances and then for once we have officially been outshortened by the americans a terrible loss a sad sad day in australian history but the fact that we call it a full beetroot and they call it beats i honestly didn't know what she was going to call it she said beats and i went um musical notes sandwich sanger sausage sandwich what's yes. that oh. sausage sandwich put oh. bread and a sausage Oh. Like a hot dog? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is the face of pain right there. Absolutely every single Australian ever in the world has been triggered because that is uh, that is sacrilege, to be honest. I can forgive not knowing what a sanger is in terms of a sandwich, but not knowing or well, not ever having sausage on bread and having a sausage sandwich. What is going on? It is so much better than any hot dog you could ever have. You know, you go to Bunnings on the weekend, on a Saturday, you donate to charity, you get a sandwich or a sausage sanger, as you might call it. All of these Americans are just being deprived of one of the world's greatest gifts. Honestly, if you haven't tried it, I do recommend a little bit of barbecue or tomato sauce depending on your preference and go from there. Just plain white bread, easy. Chocolate milk, chocolate milk, chocolate yeah. biscuit, joggy biggie. Oh, that's so cute. Joggy biggie. That's UK oh, as well. I want I think. a talkie biggie. <laughs> Diaper, nappy. Who's the DD? Who's the desert driver? Oh, I screwed oh. it up. Oh, I stuffed it up. Ah, oh, screw it. Nah, oh, stuff it. Oh, geez. They're just absolutely flying through these. Once again, though, we've been out shortened by the American. What is going on here? Yes, like she said, you might say designated driver or a deso driver, whatever, but DD. I mean, I had no idea what that was referring to, but she clearly just, it's part of the vernacular. And then otherwise, I'm fairly sure these are just basically USA versus UK comparisons. We've just stolen their word, kept it, and the rest is history. I have to get up so early. Oh, I'm going to get up at Sparrow Fart. At uh, what? Sparrow's Fart in the morning? Is that a thing? Look, maybe. Ah, yes. Now we're finally getting to the good questions or the meaningful questions. Where did that saying come from? I have no idea and it doesn't really make sense. I can only imagine that it's not really rooted in anything real. But hey, if that's what people want to be running with every time they wake up or every time they talk about getting up early, eh, more power to them. You look like you saw a ghost. You look like a stunned mullet. Oh, I feel sick. Oh, I feel crook. <laughs> AC DC. Akadaka. <laughs> no <Yes>. way! Akadaka! <laughs> Ah, oh, he's such a prankster. Oh, he's such a larrikin. Larrikin? Larrikin. Is that UK based or is that Australian based? That sounds like it could almost be an Australian only, but I wouldn't be surprised if the UK knows it. But otherwise, we have the ACDC. I mean, people will definitely say ACDC, but you can also say Akadaka, and you just kind of change how the C sounds and go Aka instead of AC. Larrikin? Larrikin. That sounds like a last name. Georgia Larrikin. Yes. <laughs> That's my last name, everyone. Yay! Yay! I'm Australian now. You are Australian. Congratulations. 
congratulations. Thank you. Your Australian passport is in the mail, Great. along with your Australian sticker, because we don't have a flag. We don't have yes. a flag. We're not course. there yet. Yeah. Now, she can claim to be Australian all she wants, and that's completely fine, because throughout this entire video, she has certainly proven herself that she's on the right path, at least. But the real test begins is when you finally get that passport, you open it up, and then all of a sudden, you have to become a translator for your American friends. You go, oh, wait, what was Aka? What was Capsicum? Oh, all these things. And then you go, ha ha, you're not truly Australian until you just know what they really mean instead of just being able to copy what someone else is saying. But hey, like I said, this video was just absolutely rapid fire the entire time. Look, I learned a couple of things in terms of the DD. I never would have known, but at least now I know and we've got to step up our game, Australia. We can't be being outdone by these Americans. But if nothing else, it was certainly interesting to watch Georgia just teach Kristen so many different things, including the holy grail of the sausage sanger. I'm, once again, I'm sorry that America hasn't got it. Hopefully it can make its way over there at some time. Otherwise, you're just going to be missing out. And so hopefully everyone from North America was able to be in the same boat as Kristen, starting out with knowing I'm just going to say nothing and ending off knowing a fair bit, I'd say. But anyway, in saying that, I reckon I'm going to call it there. So thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, feel free to do the YouTube algorithmic things down below. Also, if this is the first video of mine that you're watching, then make sure to go check out any other ones I've done. Also, make sure to go check out the original video down in the description below. Or hey, maybe you even just want to consider subscribing so that you don't miss another one of these in the future. But all in all, have a good one and see ya.